Don't you know your own table yet? No hurry, Barney. I was enjoying myself just looking on. After you, Professor. Thank you. How's every little thing at the university, Professor? Frantic, my boy. We're preparing for fall semester, you know. Haven't seen anything of that young assistant of mine, have you, Bob Hilton? No. Look. Professor, no reflection on anyone, but couldn't you hire yourself a cat who's a little more hip and a little less square? Bob, oh, he'll come around all right. A lot of good in that boy. Besides, uh, we teach applied psychology, not rock and roll. Dig the 88, huh, man? That boy must have a dozen fingers on each hand. <laughs> I gotta get the joint jumping. I'll hang on to my seat here. <laughs> Real darn crop tonight, huh, kitten? Barney, the way I feel tonight, I could just sing my tonsils right out. Now, would you grab the ring the second time around and let the boys warm it up for you? All right, cats, the Ivy League are coming up with something big. Let's dance.
world that you say I'm in love Though I see the danger there If there's a chance for me Then I don't care I don't care Who's rushing Will wise men never go But wise men never fall in love So how are they to know an exciting thing in my heart I can hear it ring I'm in love I'm in love ha ha the laugh is on you I'm in Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You're a wonderful audience. And uh, now, for the benefit of those who don't have programs, uh, we'd like to introduce the players. First, the entry, the Pineapple Twins. They come in two crazy sizes, you know. Crushed and chunked. <laughs> you don't want to step down here, you're breaking up the set. But ladies and gentlemen, we furthermore would like to... Aloha, ladies and gentlemen, aloha. You're very thrilled when we play for all you wonderful folks. I'd like to present my... My mom. Mom. <laughs> mom and I are going to do a tune together without him. Oh, no, no, no. You don't quite understand. We do this later. I'll do an accordion solo right now. I don't hurt your feelings, Frank, but these folks aren't ready for your type of night. I've worked these saloons before. I know what these drunks want to hear. Can you introduce me, please? Because what a do What do you drunks want to hear? <laughs> we want to hear some calypso. No, I'm sorry, fella. We don't do Calypso, too. The buster is very, very simple. We want to hear some Calypso. Oh, you got right in the head. Fellas, you're nice boy and sit there and drink your beer and we'll get to you later. We came here to hear some Calypso. Oh, look, look, fella. Please, leave me alone. We'll do a Calypso, too. <laughs> So dance, so they just sit and wait. It's the coolest baby. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> 
I've been looking for you. Making progress? You look like you've been called up for Paul Barrett duty. Look, Barney, it's just that Professor Winthrop has always liked this place so much, and I just think... Uh, yes, uh, great crowd tonight. And I hate to see it closed. Oh, good music, too. Uh, yes, marvelous. Now, what is this? Marvelous, closed. <laughs> Not a screwing line's a number. Nothing to lose a good day's sleep over. <laughs> oh, come on, give. What is it? Come on, I know it's got something to do with the club. You can tell me. I can take it. Look, I, I only got a few marbles up here to begin with. You're not doing them any good. Well, perhaps Bob was right. Uh, timely warning. It's strictly impersonal. But it's quite personal to me. The scientific approach with friends is never easy. Uh, I don't see why you have to be so blunt. Well, look, are you going to tell me or ain't you? These figures of Bob's, uh, they prove conclusively that rock and roll has passed its peak. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> you really had me winging there for a minute. Look, I've seen them all come and go, and rock and roll ain't gonna go. Hey, Joe, come here. Get a load of this. <laughs> Sit down, honey. How's my fan club? Not so good, Jill. Not so good. Quote, rock and roll is on the skids, unquote. Oh, I've been taking you for a ride, Barney. Uh, ask the assistant genius over there. You serious? It's nothing personal. It just happened to turn out that way. Oh, it just turned out that way. Well, just for the record, what do you know about music? Well, actually, very little. Well, then what right have you got to tell these fellas about it? May I say something, please? My heart beats in time to rock and roll. I love every loud minute of it. I hate to see it go almost as much as you do, but go it will because Bob's figures don't lie. Well, neither does my cash register, and it hasn't missed a tinkle since Joe started knocking out the rock and roll. How about that, huh? Correct, to a point, but the handwriting's on the wall. Believe me, I wouldn't persist if I didn't like you. Now, Bob's been working on a paper for a couple of years. Trying to get you 50 and ain't the billboard. <laughs> it's not a periodical. It's a scientific thesis. Perhaps you'd better tell them about it, Bob. Oh, yes, do. Well, it's entitled Mass Hysteria and the Popular Singer. Deep, huh, Barney? And like a well. And dry. Look, if that's your attitude, let's forget about the whole... Now, Bob, your attitude's nothing to write home about. That's better. Suppose you begin by explaining your theory on trends. Oh, yes, do. Well, every musical beat or style has a tendency to rise or fall in popular appeal. For example, a style that's on a rising trend needs only the spark of a vivid singing personality, male or female, known or unknown, to explode to tremendous popularity, thus provoking mass hysteria. Hmm. Well, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, Smith. Don't sell him short, my dear. He predicted the rise of rock and roll. And it's fall. What makes you think it's gonna fall? This. It measures reactions. Ah. Like, uh, like an applause meter, huh? But, kitten, get out on that floor and bust that machine wide open. <laughs> you just bet I will, Barney. See, this, uh, 10 here is the highest number on your dial? That's right. 8 is excellent, 9 is what you might say sensational. And then 10 is boppo. I get it. Jerry? Let's have a little bit of that, uh, Rosen gal. She moves her hips, she builds a fire with a red, red lips, but she's a roving gal, keeping all the time. She gets you lost in her blue, blue eyes, she makes you weak with her ooh, ooh thighs, but she's a roving gal, keeping all the time. Throw 
in, Professor. Now, what do you want, my eye teeth? Barney, it hit pen just once on our last note. Yeah, but I made it, didn't I? Most of the time, it was eight. A little over, a little under. Well, what's the matter with eight? We took a reading six months ago. The needle hung ten through your whole number. All right, all right. It could have been the crowd. It could have been a million things. But it wasn't, Barney. The decibels are beginning to slip every place I go. Look, get off my back, will you? I'm sorry you have to take it like this. Come on, Joe. I guess I hurt their feelings. People aren't guinea pigs, Bob. But facts are facts. Sure. I was only trying to warn them. How much pleasure did it give you to prove your theory? I don't know. You know, maybe I ought to give up these things and study up a little more on human relationships. I haven't seen Marion for about a week. Maybe I ought to call her. If she's awake, I think I'm going to do it. Look, human relationships are one thing, and, uh... Look, I know how you feel about Marion. You and she just don't get along, but we do. That's the trouble. You can't deny she's human. Don't be too sure. Professor Winthrop, I've been thinking it over. And not a moment too soon. Is it really that urgent? You've no idea. Well, Professor, I just wanted to know what's going to follow Rock and Roll. Now, look, Bob just left. Don't let him get away without telling you. Girl's got to have some pride, huh? Pride? What's pride? Nothing but an infantile refusal to come to terms with reality. Now, young lady, your career's at stake. Papa, Professor, Barney, would you... Now, I'll explain everything. He'll give you his blessing. Now, go ahead. Yeah. Bob. Oh, it's you, Miss Thomas. You know, I said some pretty awful things to you inside. You certainly did. You said some pretty mean things to me, too. Strictly impersonal, I assure you. I took it personally. Where to? Don't rush me. Look, will you get out of the cab? Roll is on the way out. Something must be on the way in. That's right. Well, what is it? A big dark secret? No. Well, what do I have to do? Pry it out of you? It's Calypso. Oh, big joke. I knew you'd react like that. Oh, I ought to have my head examined. Look, will you get back in the cab? Oh, you big, masterful, hunk of man. I'm going to prove my point if I have to carry you there. Oh, well, what have I got to lose? Pump the bill. Rock and roll. I like 
them a little. Well, back with the sales pitch. You still want to listen to me? That's what I came for. No, that's really very nice of you. People like you never listen to me willingly. I think you're the first one. Look, Bob, why not walk me back to my club? I can't stand it when a real talent has an empty room to play to. Okay? Sure, let's go. of yours. Tell me about it. Well, it started out about two years ago, the scientific paper on American youth. Their problems, their fears, their hopes. What has that got to do with music, huh? Well, certain symptomatic reactions became very apparent in that area. Look, uh, I think you better speak English. Professor Winston gave direction to my paper when he pointed out that Emotions are best registered under musical stimulus. Oh, I get it. Good. Then I became interested in the maximum stimulus. Mass hysteria and what makes a tick, huh? Precisely. Which leads us right to rock and roll. Would you like to know why it became so successful? <laughs> well, as long as you've got me out here, you might as well tell me, huh? <laughs> well, you see, the basic song represents stability, security, safety. You can rock and roll a song until... You're completely carried away. Yet subconsciously, you're like a captive balloon, soaring to the skies, yet all the while tied very securely down to Mother Earth. You know, I never thought of it that way. You're not supposed to. Something as good as this. Why can't it last? It can. Maybe not as big. But we're in a very restless world, always demanding something new. Like Calypso, huh? It has a new beat, a tremendous excitement potential. Crazy. And you know, the roots of Calypso go very deep in the ground. You mean like with the lyrics? That's right. The lyrics, the plaintive lament of the weary worker, of the heavy-hearted. They're the escape valve that makes it possible to go on living. Like our very own spirituals. That's right. Can't do a Calypso spiritual, or can you? I'm not a musician. Do you think a Calypso chorus could fit into the American scene? I don't see why not. Neither do I. So as soon as I find the right singer, I'll prove my thesis, turn in my paper. You're very confident about this Calypso thing, aren't you? Well, clinically speaking, it has all the ingredients. Clinically, schminically, if you haven't got it down here, it ain't got it. You like it. A little bit. It could grow on you. Maybe. Ah! Oh, how did we get here? You're a homing pigeon. You're very nice. Thank you. I enjoyed myself. I'm glad. Look. Maybe you've got something and maybe you haven't. But if you do, and I'm the first one to click with this new Calypso style... It'll cause mass hysteria. And all the cats will be on my bandwagon, huh? I'd like that. <laughs> when I can finish my paper. Yeah. Look, Joe. I don't know what I've done to offend you. But honestly, I didn't mean to or want to. I guess it's just that you and I aren't in the same league together. Wonderful. Let's go tell Bob. Oh, no. And get both of our necks flat. Now, look, um, I'll meet you, uh, say at about 4 o'clock, huh? I'll meet you here at 3. Oh, no, no. You don't seem to understand. This is the lion's den. Look, uh, I'll meet you at the, um, at the YMCA. We're rehearsing some kids for a church benefit, okay? Good day. Good night. Good night.
Look, I got a date and I'm late. Listen, we've got to talk. Robert, you realize this is the first chance we've had to talk all week? Can't we talk a little later? I don't want to keep Joe waiting. Oh, well, a few minutes can't make any difference to him. Him? You don't understand, Joe. We have so much to talk about. Now, first... Look, my project is at a crisis and I've got to go. Oh, it's that Professor Winthrop again. He has you mesmerized. We've been through this whole thing before. He's the one that's separating us, inducing you into psychology. You should never have listened to him. Look, mating to breed personality. Mating to breed strength and agility. Mating to breed appearance. Eugenics in the mind of man. Did you get that? Mind of man. Soon they'll isolate the heritable genes that affect the mentality. Then where will you and Dr. Winthrop be? You know, I have a good mind not to give you my big news. Okay, then we'll go here. Oh, no, you don't. Miss Merriweather has just finished breaking down your pedigree. She ran a comparison test between your probable genes and mine. And do you know what? What? Our children will be dark and handsome, strong but lithe, and three out of four will be males. Well, what do you know? Oh, I knew you'd respond to that. Isn't it exciting? Professor Sims is most anxious to run a test on them as soon as they're born. He feels that they will inherit our mental capacity. Well, how do you like that? And best of all, my thesis next June will be documented with that of our first child. What? My thesis will predict every eugenic factor inherent in our firstborn. Our firstborn? But, I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't... Now you're gibbering at me. No, but I mean, shouldn't we be, shouldn't... Uh... Of course, silly, and right away. A week from tonight is possible. I mean, shouldn't we be married? That's what I said, a week from tonight is possible. But how about my paper? You think more of your paper than of me. Mary, I didn't say that. Now listen here, Robert Hilton. Professor Sims' genes are every bit as good as yours. And if you don't want to sire our children, then say so at once. Look, I can't even think right now, and I can't keep Joe waiting. Oh, why must you involve him with... Joe is not... Oh, go. Go this very minute. But just remember, Professor Sims' genes are every bit as good as yours. Oh. You got sugar lips with the cherry glow, and all they say is no, no, no. Jerry, not now. Forget it. Well, anything you say. All right, boys, that's it. Well, kids, thanks for a wonderful rehearsal, and uh, I guess we'll rehearse again tomorrow, huh? Bye. 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 Joe, I'm awfully sorry I'm late. I try to get here sooner, honestly. Just as long as you're here now. Hey, Jerry. 
Do you mind if I change my mind? No, we don't mind. All right, fully set up for the calypso, huh? Now, look, not a word of this to Barney, understand? He gave me this time to rehearse the kids for the church benefit, and I feel like I'm double-crossing him. What he'll be thanking you for, believe me. Yeah, if he doesn't kill me first. May we listen to him, Miss Thomas? Well, of course you may. As a matter of fact, the more the merrier. Come on, kids. Okay, Jerry. One, two, three. Long time back, the music sound. Rusty rolling, doggy hound. Now the music makes us say, rhythm, beat to make it way. Calypso boogie. Calypso boogie. Calypso boogie. Calypso boogie. Calypso boogie. Calypso boogie. Long time back, the papa sing. Do the waltz and make it swing. Now they say he beat insane. The papa he throw away the cane. Calypso boogie. good rehearsal and I guess um well I guess we'll see you all tomorrow okay bye, bye. okay Jerry I'll see you fellas tonight okay well how was I just wonderful I only wish I'd brought the decimal recorder you must have been at least eight for oh, you and your figures but eight's excellent just excellent this is the first time that you've tried it oh I see this is supposed to be a compliment huh certainly it's supposed to be a compliment oh. You know, I don't think I'll ever be able to understand you. Well, don't try. When two people start being predictable to each other, the spice is gone. Oh. Will I see you tonight? Just try keeping me away. Tonight I'm going to record the first mass hysteria ever induced by Calypso. Look, uh, maybe I have to spell it out for you, huh? You know, you threw a scare into Barney last night. But he dies hard and he'll go down fighting. If I even so much as breathe, Calypso, somebody's going to get hurt. But my paper, I've got to finish within one week. Since when? That isn't what you said last night. I didn't know last night what I know now. Oh. Well, I tell you what. Barney's in a good humor. You will sing Calypso. I'll ask permission. Yes. 
for an encore. The Goofers are gonna do a brand new rock and roll number entitled, I'm gonna rock and roll until I die. Those goofers of yours. I'm gonna knock his teeth out. That's deep. Genius, sheer genius. Teeth? Whose teeth? That character with the decibel gimmick. I was afraid you met Bob. Don't get up. We were just talking about you, Bob. A uh, nice set of teeth you have. Thank you very much. Not a cavity, not even a pillow. All right, what'd you do with Joe? I promised to let her do the talking. Uh, that way you won't need an interpreter. I also told her, Barney, not to talk to you at all unless you were in a responsive mood. All right, where is she? Changing clothes. You can't walk in on a lady and disavail. Disavail? What does he mean by that crack? Uh, he was quoting Emily Post. Now let me see if I can remember the page. Doesn't matter. She's changed already. Oh, man, that Barney's throwing fits in Technicolor. Give a thought to your cash register, Barney. Yeah, well, Jerry and Nettie, I better go and talk uh, to you. Huh? You better sing first and talk later. Tame that lion, little mouse. For 27 and come out fighting. <laughs>
right For the handsome lady that she once adored Well, I'll make it plain and simple She was bored Remember the chamber music feud? Uh, just a minute. I want to... Don't blame Bob for Wait a minute, Joan of Arc. But, uh, hey, buddy, listen Don't to give me that decibel routine. I'm telling you, I won't stand for it. So what's all the decibel? Nothing except the egghead who invented it. I resent that. Oh, you resent that, huh? Well, try resenting this. All right, Professor, all right. Barney, listen to me. Why didn't you get him to listen when I was down? Forget it. Forget it. You are behaving exactly as they did toward Galileo, Fulton, Kayam. What combo are they with? No wonder the world makes so many mistakes. No one troubles to read history and reap its benefits. All right, all right. Who is this fancy trio of yours? Another bunch of squares? They are men the world laughed at for making the discoveries that you live by today. Yeah, I had to tell me a knock. If you just listen to reason, you'll be the biggest empresario in town. Uh, try not to channel. You ain't coming in clear. I'm trying to tell you that this can be the hottest club on the coast. Ah. Well, let's talk. All right, let's have some music. Dance, everybody! When he wakes up, give him this for me, huh? Hey, you get better fights here than on Wednesday TV. Hey, Bob. Bob! Hey, wake up, it's me, Joe. Hey, Bob, you were wonderful. Honest. Hey? Take it easy, champ, come on. You were wonderful. I could have beat him. Sure you could. It kicked me. You see him kick me? Yeah, but up until then, you were just fine, honest. Was I really? You were wonderful, honest. Come on, get up. Get your suit off, huh? You were wonderful. Come on it. More research, Bob? And who might you be? And who are you to ask? I'm Robert's fiance. Miss Thomas, may I present? No, you may not. Robert? Here I am at this late hour to apologize for my rudeness, and this is what I find. Robert, I am ashamed of you. I just don't know what to think. I can't think. I don't know what to say. Neither do I. So what's my friend either? Okay. Robert? Galio, Milltown, and Cayenne. Me, I got an open mind, and I'm gonna keep it that way. Open mind? You feel like you got a hole in your head. Oh, oh, Barney's a man of vision. That's me. Now, leave me to that dump you dug up, and let me see you in front of that Calypso combat. I'm sorry, Barney, I'm cured. What's the matter, you crazy or something? Honey, you gotta dig the future. I'm not going. Baby, look at that wall. There's handwriting all over it. Come on. I insist upon an answer right this very minute. Oh, now, relax, Miltown, relax. 
We're gonna angle on down to Seville and have ourselves an audition. Not in a million years, we're not. No, oh, come on, kitten. I might have known you were behind this. Perceptive. Yes, very perceptive. Coming, Bob? It should be your night to howl. If he goes... Better not say it, Marion. Robert! Robert! <laughs> You know, you still owe me an explanation. There's nothing to explain. Meaning me. Meaning you at the shoe fits. Hey, wait, 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 wait. wait. What goes? What are you doing? It's the chemical compound. If these concoctions sit too long, they become lethal. Ah, oh, let me see. Where were we? Oh, yes. Bob had just called Joe a nothing. I did not. Yes. <laughs> Look at him trying to weasel out of it. <laughs>
Honor us with a song, please. Well, no reflection on you, Lord. Now, Miss Thomas will be delighted. Look, I'm here under protest as it is. She doesn't want to sing for you. Marion, will you please keep quiet? Miss Thomas said if you would announce her. I didn't. Ah, it's the star attraction of the Downing Club. I will not. I will oblige with the greatest of pleasure. Catch it, darling. Oh, well, rats always travel in packs. I never thought you were lacking in brains, my dear. Mm. Why do I have my head examined for listening to him in the first place? Well, if you want to sacrifice your career to satisfy your emotions... Oh, now, well... look, don't you go mixing me in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Joe Thomas from the Downbeat Club in Hollywood is going to sing a song for us. I got a smile cut now, but you get it. I'll give him a song, all right. And go off the deep end. <laughs> Oh, brother, am I going to laugh this up? You wouldn't dare. Well, they want to hear Bob Calypso, don't they? Well, you just watch what I get. What do you think of Bob? We've got to stop Bob. She's a trooper. Wait till the music starts. I wouldn't put anything past her. Does anybody get a rabbit's foot? Two years' work, right out the window. I do not dig. I do not dig. Hi, kid. Hi, Jerry. You ready for me? Dig these crazy tablecloths. That's for us and paint yet. An excellent idea. They'll make everyone look moldy. <laughs> Maybe I should have gotten pink. Happy, my dear? I'll stay. I'm just liable to bust. After such a narrow escape, too. You were a lucky girl. I'll stay. What do you mean by narrow escape? All set, Joe. Later, my dear. Uh, 
We mustn't interfere with your rehearsal. Uh, Jerry, rehearse one of your numbers first, huh? Okay. Well, Professor, now we're not interfering with anything. Perfectly innocent remark. Didn't mean a thing by it. So don't try to make something out of it. Are you referring to Bob? I'd rather not talk about him. As a matter of fact, I'd like very much to forget all about it. Your very own assistant. I'm expecting his resignation any minute. But he practically worships you, Professor. Well, I'm sure he thought rather highly of me once, but his loyalties seem to be subject to change without notice. I'll be well rid of him, just as you are. A fine psychologist you are. You ought to realize Marion's a very pretty girl. So are black widows. But their principal diet is husbands. You're letting him walk right into her web. When a psychologist forgets that a child's environment is just as important as its inherited genes, he's beyond help. What kind of an environment will Marion give a child? She's bred only to prove a theory. My sympathies are with her unborn monster, not with Bob. I know it's gotten into you. Your pride's been hurt because you've lost Bob to Marion. And you can't bear to lose Faith, even when he needs your help the most. That's what you think. Think? That's what I know. And I know something else too, Professor. I don't ever want to see you again. As you wish, my dear. What's with him? Huh? What would you think of someone who let pride stand in the way of... Huh? Oh, never mind, Barney. Club Trinidad, featuring Calypso at its best, and the promising new song stylist, Joe Thomas. Why don't you come down to the Calypso's? That girl again. And to think, Bob made her what she is, the ungrateful little minx. And with her fighting Bob every inch of the way. I should have known you wouldn't be taking us to a eugenics lecture. Slide over, I'll drive. Bob, this is the culmination of two years of solid work. You'll attend your own triumph if I have to call the police. I never thought of it that way. He's right for once, Robert. Do you think I brought you here just to listen to that ungrateful, selfish little wretch? Especially after all the things she called me. You? What does she have against you? All I did was urge her not to go for Barney on the rebound. Rebound? From whom? I have a feeling you haven't told me everything, Robert. It wasn't Bob's fault. He was merely encouraging her career. Just because she took it first. Kindly let Robert do his own explaining. Look, there's no need to explain anything. Don't you know him? He's the original divide-and-conquer kid. You should have studied psychology under him. You'd know every convolution that goes on in that diabolical brain of his. You'd know what he's going to do and how he's going to about it. My own Frankenstein. Well, as long as you can't pull anything over on the professor's point. How can anyone 
anybody be that bright and be that dumb. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll give it to you in English. Here's the girl you've been waiting to see, the girl you're dying to hear, Joe Thomas. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
Jones over there from every platter factory on the coast. Yeah, but play the music. Come here. All right, fellas, here she is. Make with the offer. I represent Stanford oh, Reporting. Oh, Honey Parker's got the biggest sales. Of Hey, wait a minute! Holy smoke! Look what she did to this applause meter! Look what she did to the cotton pick and needle! If you try that standing up, you'll have a calypso partner. Oh, I don't feel like dancing. So I see. Now, suppose you stand up on your pretty hind legs and act like a woman for a change. Jeans of yours? Oh, you just can't beat that biological urge. And I never dreamed I'd learn it from you. Well, I'd rather have my doubts, too. <laughs> you know that's the first time I've heard you laugh. Try it again. <laughs> good, good. I only hope he can do for Mary what he did for me. And what was that breakdown? Well, for one thing, he taught me to be myself. Would you like a demonstration? Thank you. 